instincts or athleticism? What's your preference when it comes to the linebacker position? What we're going to look at right now, Josie Jewell, he's all about those instincts. Absolutely. Josie Jewell is a throwback linebacker. He is 100% that guy who's going to win B-gap to B-gap. His instincts are fantastic. His problem, not the greatest athlete. Yeah, and, and the first play we're going to look at right here, uh, he's, he's playing zone coverage against Penn State. Uh, this isn't Saquon Barkley, by the way, as a running back, so you, that's probably the, the reason why he's able to make this play. But he picks up the crosser, he sees the swing pass, gets off the crosser, and he goes makes the play in the flat. This is a really, really nice play by Josie Joel. Absolutely. And you talk about instincts. Does a great job as soon as you see that quarterback's hands open, he gets right moving to the swing pay. This is an awesome game for you guys want to watch. Josie Jewell had something like 16 tackles here. But this is where you see it, man. I mean, he does a great job of seeing what his eyes, feeling with his hands, and now he gets moving right down the line. Wow. And, and that's all instincts right there, man. That's just you see in the crosser, he sees the pass going to the flat, and he's just darting out there. And here's another example of him in zone coverage. Does a really nice job at kind of feeling the receivers and does a good job here of making sure he gets in the window. He knows that he has safety over the top, so he's able to play it a little more shallow than he normally would, but does a great job of getting into the window. And we see this a lot out of Jewel, his ability in zone coverage, man. This is his strength. This is what he does best, and he's really good at it. Yeah, absolutely. Does a nice job here of sitting down, feeling the receiver, using his hands to make sure he can feel him. Because what he's doing now is his eyes have gone to the quarterback. He's not looking at the receiver anymore. A good defensive player, they have four eyes, two on their head, two on their hands. And there's, I believe that's Josh Jackson there with the pick six. No, that's not. I don't know who that is. I will put on field day, though, on this, on this Ohio State game. Yeah. Yeah, they did. There you go. All right, so next thing we're going to look at here, uh, a little bit more instincts. Now, this is a fourth and one. He doesn't stop JT Barrett from getting the first down, but I, I still think this is a really nice play. This is an unbelievable play here. So what you guys can barely see here is Jules going to be lined up. He's stand up pretty much going to be right at the top of the hawk towards the bottom of the screen here. Can't really see him. This ball right yep, is going to be run away from him. If Josie Jewell – does not have the great ability to read the pull and know, hey, there's pull. I got to scrape over the top. This should be a touchdown. It really should have been a touchdown here. So, yeah, you know what? If he doesn't make the stop here, but this is unbelievable, dude. Most, most collegiate players and even some NFL players don't have that type of awareness. So if he doesn't fill that right there, if he doesn't get in that gap and he doesn't make that tackle, he's going for like 20, 30 yards. Yeah, JT Barrett might bang his head in the goalpost, man, because there's no one in between here. Look at that. Then wham. Makes the play. All right, so next thing we're going to look at here. So we talked about the instincts, but does he have – yeah, okay, this is a pass breakup. Never mind. Wrong clip. Uh, but this is, this is something he did a lot in college, a lot of tip passes at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, and this is something, you know, as, as Eagles fans, you guys are all too familiar with the RPO, right? Penn yeah. State ran this offense extensively this past year. When you have Saquon Barkley, it makes sense. But this is a great job here of him feeling and being aware, okay, I'm not going to get to the quarterback. So I'm going to settle down in his window and I'm going to get up. It's a very, very good play here, man. I mean, this is how you beat the RPO, by being able to feel the play and then get your hands up. All right, so the next things we're, we're going to look at is his limited athleticism. We talked about the instincts, yeah. but uh, we're, we're going to see him get matched up one-on-one -on -one against Saquon Barkley. Yes, I know, it's an unfair matchup, but you know what? You're going to be playing NFL caliber running backs every Sunday, and third and 12, he's one-on-one -on -one against Barkley, and he's got no shot here. No shot here. And you know what? Yeah, there's no one in college football like Saquon Barkley, but you know what? In the league, when you go up against guys like Duke Johnson, Gio Bernard, Darren Sproles, et cetera, there's a whole, every team has one of these patch-catching backs. This just shows it really here. Athleticism and man coverage, this is not Josie Jewell's game. This is a big issue for him in the NFL, too. He's great in zone, but when he gets matched up man-to-man -man like this, it's game over. Yeah, this is, this is free money here. It really is. So the, the next thing we're going to look at, I, I believe uh, he, he reads 
a toss to the right uh, on Barkley, and he's, he's in position to make the play, and he doesn't make the tackle. Again, instincts over athleticism. That's how you would look at Josie Jewell here. So Josie Jewell reads the play right. Problem is, he just doesn't have the juice in the legs to be able to stay with Saquon Barkley. So it makes a diving attempt, and sometimes it's all you can do. I get it, but, man, just a big issue here playing in space. This is not his game. Now, does he not take the right angle there or is because, you know, maybe he's thinking to himself, all right, normally I take that angle and I, and I can take down a running back, but maybe he just underestimated Barkley there. There's a, whole, there's a big difference between playing any running back in the Big Ten and playing Saquon Barkley. The problem yeah. is most NFL running backs are closer to Saquon Barkley than they are with anyone else in the Big Ten he faced. Exactly. And you can see right there, like, like say a guy like Malik Jefferson – if he reads that play right, he might be able to make that tackle, although he doesn't have the instincts that Jewel does. So, you know, yeah. he would make that play. But uh, you can see here, a, a more athletic linebacker would make this play. I agree with that. So there you go. All right, uh, next thing. Not a great blitzer. I, I saw a lot of instances where he would get hung up at the line of scrimmage. We talked about guys like Rashawn Evans, great blitzers. Well, Josie Jewel, this isn't in his game. Not at all. I mean, Josie Jewell is a guy who he's going to win B-gap to B-gap in the run game and in zone coverage. If you're asking him to blitz, you're, you're really kind of wasting him because his ability is more of a dropper. When he, get, when he gets going in the blitz game, it's pretty much like watching me or Adrian run right into a brick wall. It's not pretty. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he, he's got no steam moving forward either. No steam moving forward, very little hand usage. And, yeah, you know what? You can't teach that. You can teach different hand usage and things like that. I will say that. But if you're expecting him to blitz day one in the NFL, you're setting yourself up for failure. Yeah. All right. So where do you see Jewel getting drafted? Can, can he be drafted in the third round? Is he more of a fourth-round guy? What do you think? You know, I think, he, Adrian, he's probably one of those guys goes 50 to 70. I think that's probably his range. Here's the deal. If this was the 1980s, Josie Drew will be a first-round pick. Mm. But because we're playing in 2018 where we're essentially putting another receiver at the running back position and you're asking him to play in space, it's not a great fit. The other thing I will give Josie Jewell, playing in the Big Ten, playing in the SEC, those are conferences that favored him. If he played in the Big 12, it wouldn't look pretty because his style of game is not about playing in space. Yeah, I like Josie Jewell. I do. But you have to understand what you're going to ask of him. You're only going to ask him to play B-gap to B-gap and play in zone coverage. You're not going to ask him to play man, and you can't ask him to blitz. And because of that, that's why I think he's probably not a second-round player. Well, the good thing for the Philadelphia Eagles, if, if they do draft Josie Jewell, he's not going to be asked to blitz much because Jim Schwartz doesn't like his linebackers to blitz. They play a lot of coverage, a lot, a lot of zone coverage with their linebackers. So he would fit Philadelphia's scheme. Certainly. Yeah, I think that's a great point, Adrian. I think he would fit. And you know what the other nice thing is? He would also fit where the picks are currently sitting for the Philadelphia Eagles, too. So you wouldn't have to ask a lot to get him. I don't think a guy like Van Der Esch is going to be there. Malik Jefferson, maybe it's a little too rich to take him at 32. I don't think Evans is a great fit. Make sure you guys check out our videos we did on those guys for further you know, descriptions on them. But I think Josie Jewell could be a fit there. And I think the spot you would draft him in is pretty appropriate. Yeah. All right, so do you think he would be available in the fourth round when the Eagles pick there? That, that's like that's, that's too much. That so might be a little much. I yeah. think I, I would have Josie Jewell in the mid-third. Yeah, that makes about sense. So if, if they trade back out of the first round, maybe you get a third, a second and a third, and you take him in the third. That's yeah, I, I think that's fair. I mean, the other thing, too, is you know if, if you're a team who's all about athleticism, getting explosive at the linebacker position, guys who can run – Think about a team like the Atlanta Falcons. They want everyone who's able to move. Josie Jewell's a nightmare situation for you because you wouldn't want him. He's a 4-8-2, which is a very, very slow 40 for the NFL. It's not bad for college, but in the NFL, that's pretty darn slow. Yeah. All right, that's Josie Jewell, Brennan Albert. I'm Adrian Fedkew. Anything else you want to say? That's it. All right, so we're out. Peace. Appreciate it.